Hey folks, today we are at the Barbican Centre in London reviewing the Panasonic Lumix 28-200mm f4-7.1 to macro OIS lens. We're going to dig into the details, we're going to see some fantastic architecture, so let's get into it. What I'm excited about with this lens is that it's so small and light. It's only 413 grams and it's a seven times zoom. We'll, we'll dig into what that means in terms of specifications in a little bit, but in focal length, it goes from 28, which is pretty wide. You can get a really nice wide field of view uh, all the way to 200, which is a good, strong telephoto. All of that in a really compact little lightweight body. So this lens on the surface sounds like it has it all. It's got the wide angle, it's got a really strong telephoto, it's small and light, it's got image stabilization and it's got macro close-up capabilities. With all this lens's versatility, the fact that it goes from a really good wide angle to a super telephoto, a compromise has been made to make it so small and that is the aperture. At 28 millimeters, it's an f4, and that's perfectly usable in a lot of environments. You might struggle a little bit indoors, but you can bump up the ISO. At 200 millimeters, it's 7.1. So as you zoom in with this lens, the aperture, the maximum aperture available to you drops down. And we're shooting on a fairly cloudy, rainy day in London. So we're really gonna put that to the test and find out what that means in terms of shooting compromises. We've got ISO that we can work with and we've got image stabilization to work with. So they, those are on our side and we'll see how it works in practice using it in you know, not beautiful sunny conditions. What I realized as I set this shot up is that I wanted it wider and I didn't have to change lens once. I started at about 135, thinking I'd be tight in on the water feature. Um, but actually, as I set it up and I changed my composition, I pulled back to 50 mil. This is a lens that allows you to explore without having to think, what lens do I need for this shot? I was able to set this up on the tripod and then use the zoom and use the tripod to just to adjust the composition exactly as I wanted to. We've come inside to get a little bit of shelter from the rain, but also to test out, really thoroughly test the low light and close up performance of this lens. One thing I would say, this lens is weather sealed. We've just come in from some pretty heavy rainfall. And I, I think it's probably fair to say this lens is very well weather sealed when it's closed up at 28. But because it telescopes out and it, and it pulls in, if any moisture and droplets fall onto those barrels, those are effectively being pulled in towards the lens. And while it will, try to windscreen wiper them off. It's something that would make me less comfortable shooting for extended times out in the rain, especially if you're shooting at 200 a lot. With every weather sealing system, I would say it's, a, it's an insurance policy. It's not something to depend on. And if you are going to be shooting for a long time in the rain, then a rain cover is a really valuable investment as well as weather sealed kit. So I'm testing the macro functions of this lens on this quite spectacular coat of arms in the church here. The spurs on the stirrup are about the same size as my little fingernail. For the 200mm end of this lens, I can focus up to about here. But obviously my aperture is 7.1. To get 125th of a second, I'm having to push the ISO right up to uh, 12,800 this camera copes incredibly well. I'm shooting on the uh, Lumix S52X. Um, it copes incredibly well. And I can just get so close, it's, it's insane. It just doesn't stop giving me a positive confirmation that it's focusing. Really, to test this macro function, we're, we're using such a small detail because it does do 
that half life size magnification. That means that the uh, object that you're photographing at the closest focusing point at 28 mil is projected onto the sensor at half of the size that is in real life. In practice, that means that you get a huge amount of detail out of the shot, um, but it's not the brightest lens at f4 with macro photography always an additional light source that you can hold close to the subject gives you better better images and a better final result This is the IBIS test. You're just watching Luke do the full zoom from 28 to 200 millimeters. He's got the image stabilizer on so you can see how well it's smoothing out the movement. And I'm gonna run around like a bit of an idiot and you're gonna see how well it tracks. So let us know how you think the image stabilization performs in the comments below. Oh, it's very slippery. Can I slide? So that wraps up our exploration of the Barbican Center with the Lumix 28-200mm lens. Let's have a quick review of its video. You've just seen me running around with Luke tracking me um, at 200mm. He said that the optical image stabilization in this lens was really smooth, but it's worth bearing in mind that the aperture drops as you zoom. So that could affect how you work with video. And I think that Luke would prefer a fixed aperture lens for kind of ongoing regular video work. But absolutely, you can film on this, and if you were shoot shooting at a fixed focal length, then it would deliver good results for you. I've really enjoyed just having one lens on the camera the whole time. The range of focal lengths has let me explore that, and it's worth mentioning that this is the only 28 to 200 millimeter lens that's available for L-mount cameras, and it, and it covers a full-frame sensor. So any uh, Lumix L-mount full-frame body, you can pop this on. You've, you've not been able to have a 28-200 or anything with that wider zoom range before. It's a small lens. As I mentioned, it's small and light, and it doesn't add weight to your kit bag. So if you were traveling with just a body and just one lens, this would cover a lot of bases for you. It's got the 67mm front filter ring, which is available on all of the prime lenses in the Lumix range, which means that if you had special effect filters or ND filters that you'd bought for those primes, you can pop them on this lens, no problem. Holiday, travel, family photos, all of that, I mean, this lens would be a, a dream for. But if I was going out and I was like, what am I gonna work with this lens for? I would say it's ideal for location scouting. If you want a, you know, a lightweight kit and you've got a lot of focal lengths here and you go, okay, so this scene that I can see here needs a 28 mil. But if you're looking at this view, maybe it would look better with a 50 mil. You don't need to experiment with that by swapping lenses. You can have it all in one and you can just kind of look through and see what you need. And if you're planning future shoots for video or for stills, that means you can go, when we're here with this as the backdrop, we're shooting on a 50 mil. And you can mood board all of that and storyboard all of that so that you're ready to shoot. There's one other lens that this reminds me of, and that is the Lumix 24 to 105 millimeter f4 zoom lens. The benefit of that is that it's got a fixed f4 aperture all the way through its zoom range, but it is a little bit heavier, and if you want that 28 all the way to 200 in a lightweight package, this is the lens for you. This lens is available to pre-order now on our website. It's 899. Uh, if you're gonna order it, and if you're gonna shoot with it, or if you get it and you take a shot, let us know on our socials, tag Wex Photo Video. We love to see the work that you make.